Romans, the eighth chapter, if you'll open your Bibles to that. And those who have just come online with us on the internet, if you'll get your Bible, turn to Romans, the eighth chapter. We're in a current study on the book of Romans account of creation. And they, it's just interesting the way the writer Paul approached creation uh, with, a, with a view from the New Covenant perspective. And since I was doing the New Covenant on Hebrews, uh, out of Hebrews 8, 9, and 10, I thought it would be interesting to correlate that. And uh, <clears throat> verses 18 through 27 is where Paul deals with that in detail. And so that's been our major text. And today we're looking at, and we've gone through from 18, we have made our studies down into verse 26 and 27. And here's the key. Here's the key. You know, we always look for Greek markers. We, and sometimes you can see these markers in the English. Sometimes they're clear, like today's markers are very clear in the English. But sometimes the markers, we call them Greek markers, because sometimes you can see them in the Greek a little clearer than in the English. But the word groaning is a big marker in this whole passage, 18 through 21, of Romans 8 and um, on your paper you'll see that I mentioned this on your paper uh, at the very top in fact because of those I divided I divided the this contents contents of verses 8 18 through 27 into three sections based on that word groaning for example, I noticed when I studied that, that it was interesting that in verses 18 through 22, he's talking about the whole creation groaning. I thought that was interesting, so I wrote that down. And then I noticed this word again is used in verses 23 through 25 for Christians. I, I kept C words, if you'll notice. And then in 26, 27, the comforter, you know, the Holy Spirit is called the helper or the comforter out of Romans I mean, out of John 14 through 16. And so, and so I had my three C's. And, and it was all based on the marker groaning. Uh, the same Greek word is used there in different forms, but it's, that's the Greek word, stanezo, uh, which means to groan, uh, it means to groan with inside oneself with feelings of, of, of some sort of grief, sorrow or grief. So I'm down into my final groaning, <laughs> which you ought to be happy with. I'm down into my final groaning in verses 26 and 27. It's the indwelling Holy Spirit groaning. And I can't tell you how, 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 this, is, this passage in context is a wonderful passage because now we've seen three groanings. But there's so much abuse of this passage in the Christian church, it's unbelievable. So here's verse, so, but we're going to clear it up. Verse 26 and 27, and in the same way, that's, that's a, a big net because... <laughs> When he says in the same way, he's talking about everything about the other two groanings. Now he's come to a third groaning. In the same way, groaning one, groaning two, now we're in groaning three. You understand that? In the same way, in the same way that I've discussed the groaning of the whole creation, in the same way I've discussed the groaning uh, within the Christian's body, I am now discussing it in another relation to the Christian, and that's the indwelling Holy Spirit's groaning. That's in the same way. In the same way, the Spirit, that's capital S, also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should or ought, maybe your Bible says, but the Spirit himself, that is the Spirit by himself, that is the Spirit alone, intercedes for us with groaning too deep for words. Now pause a moment for you to reflect on that. 
because what this is what this is in theology now listen to me is called the language of omniscience the language of omniscience you know the character of god omniscience omnipresence etc this is the language when it says the holy spirit is groaning with words that are inexpressible into the human but is clear to the divine it is it is god the holy spirit speaking to god the father it is the language of omniscience the only time you and i get a chance at that is when we understand the truth of the word of god and we are dealing with that because the language of omniscience is what the perfect plan of god was built on And you get a chance. God has shared that with you. He's shared with you some of the revealed omniscience of God. It's called the Bible. You know what it's called? It's called the Word of God. So this makes it pretty interesting. This is not, they're not he's not speaking a language that man can understand. He's speaking within, because he's speaking in the omniscience category of divine thinking. That's pretty, when it says too deep for words, that's, that's actually one Greek word. It's inexpressible in other languages of the earth. Anyhow. And he, God, who searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the spirit, knows the mind of the spirit. You understand that? So they have, in prayer, they, they communicate in the language of omniscience. When they reveal it to us, now this is important, when they reveal it to us, it's called the language of accommodation. Letting us in on it in ways that we can understand what they're talking about. He who searches the heart, God who searches the heart, knows what the mind of the spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. That's what they're discussing. And the, but they're discussing that beyond the realm of what's been revealed, they're looking at the realm of it, how it plays out. They're looking at the, the bigger picture of how all of this that we're walking out day by day, moment by moment, called walk by faith, not by sight. They're now discussing our dilemma here. They're now discussing the bigger realm, right? They're, talk, they're discussing it in the language of omniscience. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. That's the point, right? Maybe that passage will ring a bell. Okay. Well, that's, that's what they're into. Okay. When you get to heaven, you'll get, you'll get to understand that. Now it's by and by, isn't it? So let, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll get into our, our study on the groaning of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, this groaning in prayer when he connects with God about what you're struggling with. And he's looking at the bit. They're discussing the greater picture, Right? I mean, this. listen, when we walk out the plan of God, we're talking about something that was designed in eternity past that's connected to the eternity future. I mean, listen, I mean here we are. We're just, we're just trying to get, you know, from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock with some kind of sanity, right? Or 6.30 to 7.30 with some kind of sanity. Well, let's have prayer. I give you a moment of silence of believe a priest and dwelt by the Holy Spirit. Uh, the privilege to confess sin. Why? Because you can't study the Bible in carnality. Evidence of carnality is personal sin. It could be it could be mental attitude type of sins. It could be sins of the tongue. It could be overt sins. But they must be confessed in silence and prior, prior, prior to study. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. This is operation sanctification, not salvation. This is for the Holy Spirit to minister in the teaching hour, the truth of the word of God to your soul. That's called enlightenment. The eyes of your soul will be 
thrilled with it. Uh, Ephesians 1.18, the eyes of your soul will be enlightened. What an enormous thing that is because it's enlightened to the, to the enormous plan of God that's playing out in your life. So I give you a moment for that, for, for your priesthood responsibility. Father, we're so thankful today for these who have come our way by automobile and by internet. We pray the Holy Spirit would minister the truth of the word of God into our souls and life. We pray, Father, for those who are not able to be with us tonight because of illness or sickness, disabilities, handicapped, shut in, even some in the hospital tonight. I lift before you Gary Horton. I pray, Father, for him. Uh, I pray, Father, that you would put a medical staff around him that could help him understand what's going on with his knee and uh, get him back, quote, on his feet with the gospel shoes. Uh, we pray tonight, Father, for enlightenment ministry of the Holy Spirit as we've made this prayer in his name. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, <clears throat> we're going to look at four things tonight about the groaning of the Holy Spirit. Notice in verse seven, 27, it says, And God who searches the heart, that, that's the he, knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he, the Holy Spirit, intercedes for. That's Hooper plus the ablative. And... This is very important. Now, you can't see this in the English. All you see is the word for, and it could be used in a lot of ways. But this is hooper plus the ablative in the Greek language, and it means on behalf of. Sometimes it's attached, like in, our, in one of our, in verse 26, this word is actually attached to the word intercede, hooper. But anyhow, um, he who searches, God who searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit intercedes. And listen, you're going to get a view of what this means tonight because as I talked, he's going to speak to the Father. I mean, he's going to speak on behalf. He's going to carry first. Look, if I say to you 1 John 5, 14 and 15, you know what that says? I mean, you just roughly know what it says. It's about prayer. You know, you know what roughly it says? You need to know this stuff roughly. Roughly. I mean, this is a key to your prayer life. I mean, this is one of these verses you ought to put down in your soul and get, you know, at least understand. And it tells you to pray according to the will of God. He's not going to hear it if you don't pray according to the will of God. You understand that? If you want an effective prayer life, you got to pray in the Spirit, and you got to pray according to the will of God. Now, when the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf in prayer, when he intercedes on our behalf in the area of prayer, and that's one of his responsibilities of, of residence in our life, right? He takes up residence in our life. Part of his residency ministry is our prayer life. He intercedes on behalf of us according to the will of God. So sometimes we throw it up there, and we've got a little idea about it. We throw it up there. Uh, he, he cleans it up, so to speak, and puts it to the Father, and then they take a look at it in the panoramic view. That's the language of omniscience. And we know that because he's speaking in words that's inexpressible to those of us. We don't hear. Listen. <laughs> if you're praying... And, and you hear the Holy Spirit praying in a way that you don't understand, you're in trouble. Because you don't hear that. You don't hear his groaning. He hears yours, but you don't hear his. Because his groaning is not audible to us because it is language between God the Father and God the Holy Spirit in the language of omniscience in discussing the will of God. And there's a lot of foolishness out there today about this thing. They connect tongues with this passage in prayer. 
and it's just absolutely wrong to do that. This, the, and the, the Christian is not engaged in this other than a prayer. He shoots the prayer up there, and then this is what goes on. This is groaning where? In the Holy Spirit with God. And what is that groaning? They're in the language of omniscience. So it's very important you understand that. And notice in verse 27, it's because he intercedes on the behalf of the saints. You know what that word in the Greek is? Hey, yes. You know, when it says Holy Spirit, we call it Holy Spirit. You know what the word holy is? Hey, yes. You know, when you become a saint at the moment of salvation, do you know you can never lose it because you didn't earn it? It's one of the 50 things you receive in salvation. You never lose in time and eternity. And the Holy Spirit does not live in another person's life that's not a saint. He's the Holy Spirit living in a holy believer. You know why you're holy? Because you got saved. Because the blood of Christ made you that. Not holy any other reason. We talked about that last night. About the blood of Christ. So today, I wanted to start by, by reminding you, as I did in my introduction, this little phrase, in the same way. And now he's going to put groaning in the Holy Spirit in my life in a conversation with God the Father on behalf of my prayer. You understand that? <laughs> and in the same way, what does he mean by that? Well, he's talking about groaning, the suffering, the groaning, and the resolution to it. This phrase refers back to the suffering in verse 18, to the suffering of this present time. And the groaning, and the groaning he's identified is as the pains of childbirth. Remember that? In uh, verse 22. And so he's carrying this over. We have it in the groaning of the creation. We have it groaning in the Christian's body. Uh, that's a groaning you can pay attention to, Right? I got an ache here and I got a hurt there and I, I feel, you know, I, we've all been there. Amen. By the way, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> Just in case you haven't talked to anybody a little ahead of you. But it is what it is and it is part of life. No sense complained about it. It's what happens as you get older for some and it's part of the, just, you don't have to be able to have groaning of, of, of suffering, Right? But it does kind of come with it as you age. And why? Because you're in a cor corrupted state of the Adam's sin. You're under curse. Your body came from the earth. It lives on the earth. It's fed from the earth. And it will go back to the earth when you die. <laughs> Isn't that a wonderful God plan? And you get to go someplace special. <laughs> That's about as good as it gets, I tell you. Couldn't have, I couldn't have figured that out in a million years, could have you? What a plan. What a plan. Of course, and, and this idea of pain and childbirth comes out of Genesis 3.16 and curse, right? The curse. Associ Remember, we're talking about the curses associated with Adam's sin. This is because of that. Um, what I, I was studying uh, Romans, uh, other parts of Romans the other day. And I, I ran across Romans 12, 12, and I thought, wow, that fits perfect in an outline of where I'm in in Romans 8, 18 through 27. He says, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, and devoted to prayer. And I went, you know what? That fits my outline. So I stuck it in there for you. That's a freebie. That's just a freebie. Isn't it interesting when you study the Bible how, how, how the Holy Spirit connects you with different things that, you know, you're going through it. You never saw that. I mean, I would have never connected those dots like that. Going through it the other day, the Holy Spirit goes like, hey, 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 hey. I went, okay, I like that. So I put it in. So we, what we did is we took this, the, the creation, I put it in an outline, creation, Christians, and comforter. 
And I broke it down. I broke this passage down so we could get a hold of the idea of groaning. I mean, the whole creation is groaning in the travail of childbirth. Isn't that something? And he's not going to get out of it until the first resurrection comes through and the order of the first resurrection is completed. But Paul tells you that. That's kind of interesting. And so I wrote that down. You know, I wrote Revelation 25 and 6. to give you. So where do you find in the Bible the first resurrection, you know? So I have to sometimes tell people on the internet where I found it. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 26, where he talks about there's an order in the first resurrection. There's a dispensational order, too. People go, yeah, you don't believe in this. Well, I don't care what you call it. There's, there are specific periods of things that things occur. I'm going to fuss about it. You can call it ages, periods. You can call it whatever you want to call it. I mean, we call it dispensations. It's just pick, pick one you like, just as long as you got periods. I don't care. The Christian will be released from the curse at the rapture, won't he? When are you going to receive your resurrection body? The rapture. You know why? Because it's the end of the church age. Everybody gets their resurrection body at the end of their... You know why the Jew didn't get, doesn't get it until the tribulation's over? That's the end of their... That's the end of their, that's the end of their tribulation. Of their right? Yeah. And so it goes right down the pike in the first resurrection, which is the resurrection of believers. They're, Paul says they're staggered, like Stagger Lee. <laughs> they're all staggered. Well, that's the only kind I got in my soul. <laughs> and I'm so glad. I don't know one song they've, they've produced in the last 15 years, unless it may be something country. About the only other songs I know are country today. But anyhow, the comforter will be released. We're talking about groaning and releasing. The, the comforter, he's in kind of a different place than the whole creation and the Christian. When will the comforter, when will the Holy Spirit be released from us? Listen to this, John 14, 16. You know what it says? It says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may be with you for. <laughs> so I don't know how that is. When I get to heaven, we'll figure that thing out. But right now, I don't have an ending to that because forever pushed me out way in the ocean without a paddle. Yeah. I don't know about that. Somebody, of course, will give me a clue from that and I'm happy for that because... Forever kind of shoved me out there, didn't it? Forever. I don't know. <laughs> you don't take care of it. Yeah, that, that's what I figure. I just got a verse, and that's the best I can do with it. I, I don't know the language of omniscience if it's not in the Word of God. Uh, besides groaning, pay attention to the key words. Now, we picked out a one, but in my text, I got, I got four words other than groaning. And groaning, I... I, that's a given, but I want you to pay attention. I want you to pay attention to the word know. That's K-N-O-W. I want you to pay attention to the word intercede and the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to go back to look at verse 26. Do you see the word know? In verse 26, do you see the word know? K-N-O-W. Yeah. No, not. Okay. That's oida. That's O-I-D-A. That, that's a form of horeo. It's always, oida is always in the perfect tense. They made, they used it so much, they made a word for it. This is, this is uh, uh, to see something in the mind. It's to see something in the mind and perceive, get a perception. And you go like, oh, that's what that means. Oh. Whoop. I wondered what that meant. Oh, now I know what that means. So oida is one of those things, um, they made a word out of it. And it's always, if it's oida, it's always in the perfect tense. If it's oida, it's always in the perfect tense. Now, we know the perfect tense means something is completed, results or remains completed uh, until God says otherwise. Okay? And so the word is used in verse 26, agreed? Look at verse 27. And that's oida. If it's oida, we know it's what? Perfect tense, right? We know that. Now, if you have a Greek Bible, you could actually look in a Greek Bible and it, it would, you could see oida. 
And if it, if the, the, because the word no doesn't always, and the, there's many words for no. <laughs> so you got to know. Uh, so oida, oida is in the perfect tense. So I've got two of them, right? I got them in both my taxes. Yeah. All right. Now, the other word that, uh, that has this is intercede. Now, look at verse 26. And w- while we're there, let's just look and see if the word spirit is too. Yeah. All right, is the word intercede and spirit there? Yeah. 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 All right, let's go to 27. Intercession, same thing. Uh, intercede or intercession. It, do we have the word intercede and spirit? Yes. Okay. All right. So you see, these, these, they're definite markers. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, we, I mean, he's talking about something and he's connected. Yes. All right. So that, that's important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to show you what he's talking about here. Well, the, the, the really subject is groaning, isn't it? He's groaning uh, in, in our prayer life. Uh, there is this groaning, not that I'm aware of. I have never heard the Holy Spirit groan. Okay? But then again, I've never heard the whole creation groan either. But I have heard Christians groan. <laughs> I, I think it was groaning. I'm not quite sure. Uh, well, could have been. Muttering and whining maybe. But I just classified it groaning. But, and I, I haven't, you know... I haven't really sat in the forest to listen to it, to tell you the truth. It may may do it. It may be when the it may take a wind to kind of blow it and creak it and all that. But I don't know. But it goes on whether I know it. You know, if the tree falls in the forest, you know that story. Yeah. Okay. So I want what I want to do. I want to take a look at the word no, and then I'm going to look at intercession. Intercession. And then I'm going to look at the word spirit as it's used contextually. Oida, perfect tense, as I said, refers to something you have learned biblically. Now, we're talking because this is a word connected with what we're studying in the Bible. So it's, it's, it's Bible doctrine. Uh, knowing refers to Bible doctrine that you have learned, that you understand, and you believe. See, that's oida. You know it. Now, you may be at a stage in your growth where there are things you absolutely know to be true and you have to struggle a little bit to find them. That's why a Bible with a concordance is helpful, isn't it? Because you say, hmm. And listen, you can know a lot and sometimes you just get blank. And a concordance helps you because you can remember some of the key words. You look at some of the up the key words and go like, there it is. And then if you got it like me, then you write it someplace in the Bible and t- tag it so I don't have that. To do have to do that again, but at, at some point uh, you get. Isn't it amazing how much you actually know that you don't really pay attention to? I mean, you know, it just all of a sudden you get in a discussion, or all of a sudden you get talking with something, and all of a sudden it just, yeah. I mean, it's amazing to me how much the whole, how much you have learned, and the Holy Spirit has stored teach and recall. It's amazing to me how much there is there. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I'm amazed at myself sometimes when um, something comes up in a conversation and I haven't thought anything about it. And all of a sudden I go, like, mm, I need some information here. And the Holy Spirit just goes, Ch-ch-ching. and I go, like, wow, that's pretty amazing. I mean, it's like, I mean, a computer is nothing to what we got in our head. I mean, it's amazing. Well, anyhow, so it's something we have learned. From the Word of God is something we have learned, we understand, we believe in the past with the result we know it, okay, that we know, and that is going to be there in residence, is going to be there for the future. You know the one thing you're going to carry out of this old world? Only one thing you're going to carry out of this old world? Bible doctrine, Bible doctrine in your soul, Right? Because it's the eternal word of God. That's pretty amazing. You know, in funerals, I see people buried with the most unusual things. Now, I haven't seen a dead dog. I haven't. Oh, there they go. I knew. There we go. That's country. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. Well, see, I knew it had to be. 
I had to, it had to be, I mean, if the pharaohs took them, you know, the rest of the world's going to do it. You know, yeah. would you hate to have been married to a, to a pharaoh who died? Huh? Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Remember that song at camp, Pharaoh, Pharaoh? I love that song. Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Uh, anyhow, listen, and in and, and verse 26, here's the key. Let's go back to verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our what? Watch this now. See the word weakness? All right. In the same way, the Spirit helps our weaknesses for reason. Here's a statement of our weaknesses. The whole, why God had put the Holy Spirit in the church age believer is because in those moments where we are in weakness, Paul, listen to me, Paul was in it in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, where this word weakness is used. 2 Corinthians, 12th chapter, you know, we praise three times, right? Don't you know the Holy Spirit had a job there with the language of omniscience with Paul? But we have that word weakness, and it's a big deal. If you pay any attention, if you read 2 Corinthians 12, uh, 7 through 10, that's a, you watch the word weakness and strong, strength, how this thing works. But anyhow, uh, in the same way, the spirit, spirit, the indwelling Holy Spirit helps. I'm going to come back to this now. Helps our weaknesses. And then he explains, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. You know what we're talking about? We're talking about. In what, what's our category of the, all three groanings? They have one thing in common. All three groaning, the groaning of the whole creation, the groaning of the body of the believer, the groaning of the Holy Spirit. You know what they all have three in common? Suffering. Suffering that's attached to the curse of Adam's sin. They all have that connection. And that's what's happening. You're in it. We've been talking about it in James on Sunday of suffering, undeserved suffering. And, and how you can just, it can just overwhelm your life. It may, listen, it may not be directly within you. It could be indirectly connected to you with a mate or a parent or something. You understand? Going through it and you're connected with it directly or indirectly. For, but anyhow, the Holy Spirit is there to help our weaknesses. See, we, we got the knowledge, but we also got the weakness in regard to what's going on in our suffering in regard to being able to apply the doctrine we know. Now, come on now. You do understand this. I don't know. This is about my sixth or seventh lesson since I got, got into verse 18. Come on. For, explanatory particle, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but in contrast, the Spirit has been given to us. The Spirit himself intercedes on our behalf with groanings too deep for words. That's the language of God. Listen, that's his job. That's why he's there. Don't fall apart. Right? You got it. I don't know. I've been, I've been in Bible doctor all these years and still, what am I doing? I'm just falling apart. And you go like, look, look. This is what this lesson is for. You have the Holy Spirit of God. Listen, get a hold of yourself for a moment. Listen, it's human to be weak in times of great suffering. It's okay. But listen, don't give in to that weakness. Right? You have the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't get into the weakness of the flesh. Get into the strength of the Spirit. And what will he do? You pray. You go ahead. I don't really have to tell anybody who's suffering pray. Right? I mean, that's it. But listen, in your prayer, you, 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 the, the, it's a weakness. Like Paul, you went, what's going on, Father? I'm praying. I'm not getting it. What's going on? And he goes like, calm down, I'll tell you. Right? My grace is sufficient. Power is perfected in weakness. That's your lesson. 
calm down, be quiet. I put the Holy Spirit of God in you. He'll have a conversation with me. Get into him. Let him settle you down. Pay attention to who, why, who he's there and why he's there. Let him make intercession. Let him, deal, let him make your deal. Let him make your deal. Stop making, trying to make a deal with God. You're, you're, you're too weak to do that. Let the Holy Spirit, will he make a deal for you? Listen, of course, he's going to take your prayer, clean it up according to the will of God. So say, I know it's just a little out, but look, Father, he got the right stuff here. And, this is what he and, he, and he gets the big picture and he comes back and he ministers it. That, that's what he's saying. Because in, our, in that moment of suffering weakness, we do not know how we ought to pray as, as we ought. I mean, we got the doctrine, but we can't do it because we've got our weaknesses in the midst of the, of the extreme suffering. You know, you're caught in a house in fire and everything is falling down around you. I mean, it's pretty hard to sit down and look, okay, let's have a Bible study. I mean, so, but in contrast to this weakness response, but the Spirit himself intercedes on our behalf with groanings too deep for words is that language of omniscience. It is the spirit speaking to the father. We've turned it over to him. Right? I mean, I got a call the other day and the person was asking me questions. I had no idea about. So I handed the phone to Jane because she's the one that could, the, 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 the deal was actually between them two. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't know what they're doing. I'm going, what are you doing? And I went, wait a minute. There's the phone. <laughs> See? And, 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 that, and I thought about this passage. That, that's where we are. We look like, <laughs> you go like, let's just turn it over to him. Let him deal with it. Let him bring it back and let him work it out. Because that's what he's there for. That's his job. I brought somebody in. No, I, I, I had a great illustration, but I'm going to give it. The problem is not knowing in this case. The problem is not knowing in this case, but being able to apply what I know because of extreme suffering. Whatever that is. And we know there are many categories under, under undeserved suffering. But applying it, to the groaning of the Christian's body, right? That stuff we're going through, we're groaning. We turn it, listen, you turn it over to him. He takes it and he takes it to a level of groaning that you don't even understand. Couldn't that be a part of faith cycle? Sure it would. That's abs. Of course it is. Aren't, aren't you so smart? <laughs> you made my night. I mean, I don't know how much I've pushed that. Just for our people to learn that. Um, and, and look at, here's the word of God. We've, we know it. We've got 2 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. We've sat in class where the word of God uh, uh, taught us, corrected us, rebuked us, and trained us. And then we get out there and we just, all of a sudden we get into something that's just, I mean, it takes your breath away. I mean, we're into something uh, not by bad decisions, just we've been caught in it, it directly or indirectly and undeserved suffering, and it's just overwhelming. And we've all been there at some point or another. Um, what do you do? Because you've kicked into the area of weakness, not in the area of strength. Because you're just trying to, you're just trying to battle your way into some kind of place of stability, and it's not working, and that's a sign to you that that's weakness you're, you're operating from a base of weakness, not a base of strength. And so what do you do? I'm not able to get my head wrapped around what's going on. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm grabbing bandages and sticking them on people and, and trying to keep them from all their blood flowing out of their body and everything like that. What do I do? I'll tell you what you do. Go to the Holy <laughs> Spirit just like that. That's what he's there for. That's what he's there for. Right there. He's got it. That's what he lives for. That's, why, that's what he lives for in my life. And, and that's what we're told here. We're told this. This 
this is identified as our weakness, which this word in the Greek language with a definite article, the word with a definite article, and this word weakness is pretty much the same Greek word. You're going to find it with Paul and in 2 Corinthians, you're going to find it here, but it's with a definite article, which says that this is, this is commonplace. There, everybody has this. Everybody's going to have these moments, no matter how much you know. It's just trying to pull it, man, in the midst of warfare, of whatever is going on, the intensity of the whole moment and everything. I mean, if somebody asked you what your name was, your fellow, telephone number, you probably couldn't, get, but the last thing you do would even think about it. You don't need my telephone number right now. We're trying to save a person for dying. But anyhow, I'm just saying that this means without strength to carry on a normal load. A week, not, not I'm weak. I'm not able to carry a normal load. That's the concept in the human thinking. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit has been assigned to every church age believer to help. Now, look at this word help on your paper. It's made up of three words. That's a triple compound. Uh, my grandson, Jacob, t talking about a triple compound. Um, he plays basketball. He's about as, I mean, he's like in the fourth or fifth grade and he's tall. He's just, I mean, he, he's growing like, I mean, he's going to be the big one in the family. And we've really pushed and encouraged him with basketball because that I means he's skinny, you know, he's just, and um, he played his, final game now they're in the playoffs okay and I, I they came off the basketball game the other night and oh was he excited and so he had called grandpa and want to talk to grandpa and and he he said i i made a uh uh i don't know what they call that in basketball but a triple you know where you've got shots triple what a triple, double. a triple double he had it and he was out of sight and I said, well, how, I mean, how, you're playing basketball. How do you keep up with that? He said, well, the coach has it, but also um, Ty, his older brother, was there, and he said he kept up with every bit of it because all of a sudden he went, and they said, I didn't pay any attention. You know, I was just out there fighting for my life. But I thought about that when I heard this triple. Here's a triple. is soon, that means together. Anti means in opposition or against something or uh, something has to be moved, but it's, pretty difficult uh, and then lumbano to receive and it and it 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 means that the holy spirit has been given to every church age believer to help him carry a heavy burden that this is a teamwork that interesting it's a teamwork it's like a triple double yeah a triple double that's it I mean, that's why he's there. That's one of the purposes. Now, he's got a multitude of things, but that's one of the things. And remember this, when you get in a tough area, and, and we all get, we're all going to find that place. Know that he has been sent by God to dwell inside your body. And that's why he's called the helper. He's called the comforter, and this is explaining to help you in times of your weakness that he's there to help you help your faith carry the burden, and you don't have to carry it alone. He's there to help you carry it out by faith. You know, the word that you know that's resonant in your soul he will help you walk it out. And he'll walk it out in your life, help you walk out in your life that will fit the bigger picture, not just this one snapshot. Isn't that interesting? Just think about that. That's pretty powerful. The Holy Spirit will help in our weaknesses, will help us in our weaknesses, carry out, assist us in carrying the heavy load according to the will of God. Three, here's the word intercession. This word is used, as we saw two times. The first time it's used in verse 22, watch this now. This word has hooper on the front of it. See that on your paper? Has hooper. Hooper means when you attach this word to that word, intercession, it means on behalf of. 
interceding on behalf of. This was like Abraham. You remember when he, he interceded on, uh, over the Sodom and Gomorrah deal, you know, for Lot? Uh, this means intercession. When the Holy Spirit works intercession in our life, as we just described, it's called interceding on behalf of another. And he takes our situation and lays it up with, the, with the, the will of God in regard to the overall plan of God and speaks with the Father in the language of, of, of omniscience that takes this idea and fits it as it should go into the plan of God. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Now, you can study in the Bible and you can see it like you can see it in Abraham. When, Abra when Abraham does that, uh, and and the father responds to it, uh, but this is an in in house operation. In each one of our lives, the Holy Spirit has been sent to each one of us in this room to actually carry this kind of mission out. This is a mission work that carries this mission out in our life. And then in verse twenty seven, this word intercession is used without Hooper. So let's look at verse twenty seven. And, and God, who searches the hearts, knows what, knows what the mind of the Spirit is, that's omniscience idea, because he, the Holy Spirit, intercedes on behalf of the saints. See there? He put it, the hoopers there, but now it's separated from intercession to place, be placed on us. Do you see that? Can't just stand right. It's the same concept, ain't it? But the same concept. It's just kind of interesting. The intercession. Intercession is a ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit to every church age believer. He, he wants to do this in your life if you let him. When you get into those periods of just weakness. Well, I, don't, I don't know where my next meal is coming. I don't know what this. I don't know what that. I don't know what, what's going to happen to me. Yada, yada. You know what you do? Turn it over to the Holy Spirit. Man, I, if I didn't learn a lot of things in class, I'd try to learn this because this is pretty big stuff here. I'm telling you, this is big stuff. In intercession, the indwelling Holy Spirit, that's the IHS on your paper. In intercession, the, in intercession, the indwelling Holy Spirit speaks the language of omniscience by inexpressible groaning. It is not the groaning of the Christian, but the groaning of the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Please make sure you know that. Um, the weakness I brought out is, is, is similar. One of the things in this verse 26, when you divide that verse off because it's, it's a verse of contrast, see the word but? That is Allah. That word but is Allah. It's what we call the adversative or setting up contrast. So when you find that, you separate those verses so that you can see what's being contrast. So I did that for you. In the same way the Spirit also helps our weaknesses for an explanatory particle, we do not know how to pray, a definite article with the, with the word for pray, not any prayer, but just praying, uh, as we ought or should by what we know, right? As we ought. I mean, we know, but I can't. I mean, I'm, I'm just in an area of, of weakness in my faith. And it's because so much is going around me, I can't seem to reach out and grab a hold and pull that in. Does that make sense? I'm trying to help as best I can with this thing. But, now here's the contrast. But, Allah, that's the ad adversative of contrast in the Greek. But the Spirit himself, and that means alone. Only the Spirit of God can speak omniscience with God and look at, a look at the big picture. You understand that? But the Spirit himself, or him alone, intercedes for us. Put in the, at verse 26, we have the hooper on the tat, attached to it, not separated like we do in 27, with groanings too deep for words. And here's the Greek word. See the A on the front of that Greek word? That's the alpha privative, means without, or we would say inexpressible. Now, now it's, it's a language not here. It's a language of there. It's the language of heaven, not of earth. Okay? Uh, the intercessory ministry of the Holy Spirit is essential 
listen to me now, the intercessory ministry of the Holy Spirit is essential during prolonged periods of undeserved suffering. Now, let me tell you what I've learned as a pastor. You cannot wait to teach this when somebody falls into the pit. They could be in a coma. They could be on medications. They could be in so many different places being able to kind of pull things together in their mind. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You've got to teach this. But listen, if they're alive, the Holy Spirit, is he gone anywhere? Mm -hmm. He's in for the long ride. Listen, he can, he can speak within your heart when nobody else can speak to you. And listen, when you, even when you're in a coma, you ain't dead. And the Holy Spirit is much there and he can interact with you and he can do business for your life while you're in a coma. Do you understand that? We, we're the most privileged people in the whole wide world of all the civilizations of, of time that you could have lived in, in, a, in any land and in any dispensation of God. We live in the most exciting period of biblical history, you and I. And we live in one of the most exciting nations. I mean, this stuff is good. And boy, has he armed us for this, for, for our day. He has armed us so well for our day in which we live. Well, my final point is that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, he's, he's not called the Holy Spirit. He's called the Spirit, I think maybe three times. But I know he's in both verses. The Spirit is the third member of the Godhead that indwells every church believer at the moment of grace salvation. I say that to you because, and I've given you verses. I, I, people will say to me, they'll write me letters or whatever, and they'll say, how do you know that it occurs at the moment of salvation? Okay, I'm, I'm going to answer that. Galatians 3, 2, Acts 19, 2, uh, Romans 8, 9 through 11, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, and John 14, 16. I mean, when he enters, he's there forever. Those passages will tell you. Now, I'm not going to do all your homework, all right? But if people say, well, where can you, how, how can you do that? And another one, another one that I get asked a lot about, Ron, I hear you say that people in the Old Testament were saved just like the people in the New Testament, except it was a prophetic gospel then. It's a historical gospel now. Yeah, do you have a text that I could use because, you know, I have pastors ask me that. And the answer is yes, Galatians 3.8. So there's a great passage on that. But anyhow, the Spirit is the key. The Holy Spirit that indwells your, your life is a key to an effective prayer life. And I gave you, of course, we studied Romans 8, 26, 27. And, of course, Ephesians 6.18 is a, is a biggie. That's a biggie. Here, here's, here's, a, here's one. This not on your page. So write down, write down John 16, 13. And now, then let's put our eyes on it. And then we'll call it a night. Um, I've, got a, I've got just a couple other things to say after I read this. And then we'll call it. Well, it'll probably be a night anyhow. So 16, 13. Now, the, the, he's, he's in a great discussion here on the Holy Spirit. And he says... But when he, verse 13, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose it to you, to you what is to come. You know, you know, you know what he's, you know, you know where he's getting, you know where that conversation is going? The language of omniscience. And when he does, they're di discussing how this episode, this snapshot right here, fix, fits in the greater plan of God for your life. Isn't that amazing? Uh, you know, we fuss about snapshots when he's got the whole book laid out. Just relax. Just relax. Don't get in the flesh, get in the spirit. Let the spirit take you, take you, take you. Let him talk to the father about what's going on. It doesn't mean you shouldn't. It just means that he's there in those times. He's there to clear. 
I say clean up what you're talking to them about. You know, half the time when we're talking to them, we're emotional. This, oh, my kids, uh, I don't know what this happened to them. And he goes like, I know. It's okay, look. Yeah, it's fine, it's all right. I'll clean it up, take it to the Father. Father, this is what they're really saying. Let me close. We have learned, what we have learned is that whenever a church aid believer is in a prolonged period of suffering and feels overwhelmed, he has three promises. Here are three promises. At least they, there's probably more. I just I just laid down three. Now listen, whenever the church aid believer is in a prolonged period of suffering, now listen, I don't know what prolonged is. <laughs> All right. That might be that might be three hours, that might be three days, it might be three lifetimes. I don't know. I don't know what prolonged is, but you do. Right? Get the monkey off my back. You know. Here's three. The Spirit will help our weaknesses. Is that a promise? Yes. He will help our weaknesses. The Holy Spirit will intercede on our behalf in our prayer life according to the will of God. Agreed? Three, the spirit is able to speak the language of omniscience, which is the language behind the perfect plan of God on our behalf. On our behalf, right, Hooper? On our behalf. Well, you find me a better deal any, anywhere in the world, and buddy. I, you, you won't find it, will you? You won't find a better deal than that. All right. Let's close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight for what our hearts have learned our, what our minds have learned and our hearts have experienced in the reality of the truth of the word of God in our soul and especially the special ministry of the Holy Spirit in intercession in those times of prolonged suffering in our life and sometimes it is a, a really long prolonged Now, how do we make it when we know that I've got, this is what I've got to wake up to in the morning. This is what I have to deal with tomorrow. I mean, how do I, how do I bring my life into consider it all joy? I mean, this study fits our lesson in James well. This is how it's done. God has not left us out, not hung, he's not hung us out to dry. He's not, this is not what this is about. And we need to depend in our weaknesses, we need to depend on the strength that comes from the word of God and the Holy Spirit ministering to us and through us. And I pray that upon our church and upon those people who have had the courage to stay with us on our Wednesday night program on the internet, and I pray for them. I lift them before you, Father, and may they become good students of the word of God because within that, the eyes of their souls will be enlightened as Paul talked about in Ephesians 1.18. In Jesus' name, amen.